Hello, Tazza. Wow, did I get a lot of requests for this one? You guys really seem to hate this episode. And watching it again, I can definitely see why. Everything it does is wrong. Beyond wrong, actually. So, by popular request, let's get stuck in the ring on a new one. Wow, we are off to an amazing start. You may remember our first writer, Sue Service, and his other masterpiece, A Pal for Gary. And it looks like he's one of the creative geniuses who brought us one course meal. I'm super excited already. And that's not the only veteran who helped make this beauty. How about this one creating a splinter? We have Sean Germans. And then there's Derek Iverson, who created the creepiest book Squid's Visit, and would eventually go on to help pen demolition do this. It looks like we got ourselves a dream team here. It starts with Spongebob taking a shower until he over-dramatically drops the soap because the writers think that that's funny. Ha ha ha, nothing of substance happened. Then Spongebob cleans his brain because the writers don't know jack shit about comedy. When the shower's done, Spongebob cleans himself off with a laundry ringer. Do you Use towels, perhaps? Maybe trip dry in the fucking ocean! SpongeBob gets stressed and is prepared to go to work, but slips on soap and bounces into his cut to pad out the episode's length. He steps on a rubber duck, which startles him to step on another bar of soap, which gets him stuck in the ringer. He tries to use his tongue to get himself out, but ends up breaking the handle. Hey, this kind of reminds me of real-life situations where people can't get their hands or other extremities out of nooks or machinery. They spend days calling for help that never comes. They're actually forced to cut off that extremity in pure desperation. And these hacks think that a scenario like that can be used for comedy. Patrick comes in looking for his rubber duck. Okay, let's see this this episode. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, by this point, Patrick had an IQ of negative 75. When Spongebob asks for help, Patrick uses forever glue to help. Spongebob be stuck forever. Yes, Patrick really has become that stupid. Speaking of that, you know what I find interesting? In these Spongebob torture porns, he's actually really close to his original personality, in this episode especially. So the glue hardens because the writers think that crippling someone is funny. Of course, Spongebob's only concern is getting to work, which yes, is very similar to his original characterization. Patrick does manage to help slightly by breaking the ringer off the floor, so Spongebob gets to work and starts making Krabby Patties. And when Squidward sees the ringer, he of course laughs at Spongebob's misery. And then this happens. Hi, dumbasses. Or should I say dumbass? I think it's safe to assume that the one writer from the Splinter wrote this fascinating piece of the episode. From what I can gather, Sean Charms is like Dave Polsky, and he was terrible at slapstick, and really, really hated people. An important rule of slapstick is to never ever harm the eyes, fingernails, or toenails on camera. You've also got to be very careful with teeth. Those are extremely sensitive parts of our bodies, eyes especially, and pain towards them will automatically make us cringe. It is possible to do eye-related slapstick. Like, say someone is trying to open a switchblade and looking really closely at it. If you want to be funny, when the blade goes off, you've got to move the camera somewhere else. As that guy screams. From Derek Iverson, who seems to have some bizarre psychological horror fetish. When someone asks for a refill, Spongebob jumps up and causes the cash register to fall on his foot. Once again, the pain is raised to cringe and goosing levels. Then we have shenanigans that eventually ends with the cash register emptying on the floor. This, of course, gets Mr. Krabs to come into the picture. Thank you for Remember that line? Spongebob gets kicked out of the Krusty Krab and bumps into the cause of all of his pain. Patrick tries to cheer Spongebob up instead of, I don't know, taking him to a hospital. They come to an ice cream parlor where Spongebob is unable to eat his ice cream because the ringer is apparently stuck on his esophagus. Wow, that's just great. That implying that Spongebob is eventually going to starve to death because of that thing. Because, you know, if you can't swallow something like ice cream, that tube is closed. Tightly. Oh, and would you look at that? Patrick eats Spongebob's ice cream like a good good friend. Next, they go to the carnival, where we're treated to some scenes where Spongebob can't play any of the games or ride on any of the rides. He even gets a shine on the process. Hey, writers, I don't care who the hell you're doing this to. Torturing a character is not funny. Speaking of torture, sometime later, Patrick comes around with some cotton candy for winning a dark tournament. Wow, you send your friend flying, but instead of looking to see if he's okay, you go and play darts. Some goddamn friend you are. Finally, Spongebob has had enough, and he knocks the cotton candy to the ground. Well, sad. So, Spongebob finally tells Patrick off. Alex, I think you felt quite lucky. Hey, it's exactly like that other scene. Of course, the townspeople angrily shout at Spongebob, despite running excitedly towards their fight. Yeah, I suppose it's okay to see yacht someone for some minor accidental vandalism, but it's not okay to yacht someone for ruining your life due to their incomprehensible stupidity. Come on, we're out of here. Uh, 
Screw you. Screw you all. I knew Zeus' service would shine through eventually. In fact, I think he was in charge of the rest of the episode. Patrick tries to stay mad at Spongebob, but is unable to. Drives to Spongebob's house, breaks in, and finds something that wouldn't be out of place in a horror story. I guess Derek ain't done yet. And here comes the most infamous part of the episode. Patrick cries and it starts to melt the glue. Okay, before we move on, tears are essentially salt water. They live in the ocean. Do you dumbasses see the fucking problem? Crying does solve your problems after all. Isn't it great that they're trying to teach kids such valuable lessons in life? Are you three? What's the word I'm looking for? Dipshits. No, no word's too good for you. Assholes. That's not quite right either. Fuckers. No, I'm just gonna call you three excuses for humanity until I can find a description that properly suits your crude, idiotic, and juvenile townless asses. What? Reality. Do you three live in? I really want to know. I'm genuinely curious. In this reality, it's conventional wisdom that it actually takes an adult to write for children. What am I saying? That's that's not fair. Children will make better writers than you three. Hell, the infants would. My dog would. You mindless, degenerate hacks. You three may want to thank your lucky stars every second of every day that whatever the fuck you sold your souls to was stupid enough to give you your jobs. Because if you lose your jobs writing this trite shit, you will most likely never work again. Not just in television, but in any job. I don't know anyone who devoted themselves so substantially to even the fucking way your demented, poisoned minds around. Just leave us all alone and go back to the fucking sludge you came from. 